coming up on The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills After Show. I said to her, listen, you either pick your antidepressants or you drink, but you can't do both. But why is she on these drugs? <laughs> no one should question what I'm doing with my medical health. To hear someone on the sidelines of my life criticize what I did, not only is it ignorant, it's hurtful. Antidepressants, Xanax, and alcohol. What I have witnessed is my father on antidepressants, Xanax, and alcohol. Perhaps she should see a psychiatrist as well. This season, a couple of fresh faces join the group. You don't know you what don't faces know. are yeah, showing exactly. up. Like sometimes there's new noses. <laughs> I really feel like she's very much herself. Yes, she never changed. You have two fans here, that's for sure. The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills after show starts now. Sutton, you have lunch with Rinna, and she breaks down Erica's behavior at Diana's holiday party. I said to her, listen, you either pick your antidepressants or you drink, but you can't do both. But why is she on these drugs? Well, they're antidepressants. They're helping her survive and get through what she's having to get through. Or mask. But why mask it? Why not just face it? Well, you know, <clears throat> I have not witnessed this. You know, I saw a little bit of it, in Mexico, but I didn't really, I, to be honest, I didn't really believe it. Believe what? In Mexico with the hat. Garcelle! Yeah! Go down and pee on that new girl. <laughs> I'm not peeing on the new girl. What? Yeah, you hurt me, right? Oh, okay. I thought it was a shtick. Gotcha. So, and then I didn't witness it at the Christmas party. Sorry, guys. Oops. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> Put them here. So you witnessed it at my birthday. Have your baby mama contact me. We can get it in three ways. No! All day. Oh my god! See, I really didn't. Oh, because you were with Diana. Yeah. Okay. So I have not been privy to a lot of this. So when I'm learning this and what I'm hearing is antidepressants, Xanax, and alcohol. What I have witnessed is my father on antidepressants, Xanax, and alcohol. And it's a very, very, very dangerous combination. No one should question what I'm doing with my medical health. I've had a very hard time, and I was adult enough to go seek help. To hear someone on the sidelines of my life criticize what I did that, you know, for the betterment of my life, my daily life, and- Mental and, stability. Yeah, and my stability is, not only is it ignorant, it's hurtful. I don't even know if I heard that. That's yeah. really surprising No, I heard really it, concerning. and it really, you know, well, why does she even need it? Well, wait a second, <gasps> yeah, I know. Uh, part of me, like, hold wow. on a second, who the f are you to tell me what I need to do medically? Who is anyone to say that someone should or shouldn't be taking. Last time I checked, she wasn't an MD, and perhaps she should see a psychiatrist as well. It hits home with me. It's something that I feel very strongly about, yeah. and what can we do? Now I'm gonna step in. Now I wanna know really what's going on. She's been very upfront about her father committing suicide. Did he need help? It would seem, yes, maybe. Her life is a mess. Do the drugs, camouflage everything, so that you're not really dealing with it. Is that bad? No, it's honest, but she's gonna come for you. I don't, I don't care. No, I know. She's also a mental health advocate on Instagram for the month of mental health. You didn't know, girl? Go look at her Instagram. Well, it just feels like- a, So what is it? A lot of contradiction. So a what is it? Times. Are you supportive of people in their mental health? Are you not supportive? Or is it like convenient? Or you're, you're supportive when it's convenient, supportive when it's not? It's very difficult to trust someone's best intentions, especially when they say over and over, I'm a very, very good person. I am a very good person. I'm a very good person. But you, I'm sorry, I didn't have a gun to put to my head. I mean, I wasn't held at gunpoint, I'm sorry. Why does she need antidepressants? Why are you here if you're on bed rest? So you're on bed rest, but you're here. Yeah. That's confusing. You see, there's a pattern here of Sutton saying these things, and it's like, come on, like, what are, what are, what are you saying? Are there any castmates from a different Bravo show that you're close with or have a connection to? 
I think what would surprise people, like I really just met Teresa Judice. For the longest time, we've all been saying her last name wrong. I liked her a lot. I thought she was really fun. I met her fiance. Wow. She met him. He was jogging on the beach in New Jersey, and she was walking or talking to a friend. Why doesn't this happen to us? No ourselves? kidding. No what kidding. What is wrong with us? People are on the plane. Oh, I was at Starbucks, and I met the love of my life. I go to Starbucks all the time. I met Star Jones on the plane. We're great friends now. Yeah, but you're not dating her. No. She's not, I'm not a lesbian. She's not a lesbian. She's married now. I would say that I think I, Marlo and I have never met, but that would be a good one. How are you going to text her if you don't know her? It's called the Instagram. Oh. And well, that's not texting. That's DMing. Same. 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 Dorinda and I. Though, oh, yeah. We do text back and forth. Same. And we have had dinner. And she's hilarious. She's awesome. So those are two good ones. Ultimate Girls Trip Season 4, Return to Bluestone Manor with you guys. Oh, God. Oh, can we go somewhere warm? We've loved getting to know Hip Hop Rob a little more this season. Oh, yeah. Rob, he loves a dance. Our friends call him Hip Hop Rob. That's his nickname, actually. Sorry to God. There's sort of this kind of concept of like a house husband. And people say like, how is it being one? He's like, I don't, I would not put myself in that category. He's like, doesn't care what he looks like. He's all like, you know, I, I, he walks downstairs and whatever, like crappy clothes he's in. And he actually has a very good understanding and respect for production too. And so he's always like, when he sees like a crane in the back, you know, he's, he's like, oh, what cameras are you using? Like, it's a totally different vibe, like with him around, but, um, Rob is just like, look, the guy makes family movies. He is a kid at heart and he's very soft and sweet. He's such a good dad. He literally plays baseball with Max two hours a day. You know, so in my business, I don't have to go to an office every day. Like our offices are in Asia and they drop ship to the States. So like I don't have a lot of like daily, I don't need to do that. It's all emails and whatever. So I can work on the go. Like my phone is like, attached to me. So when I decided to do this, it was a major shift from like a schedule of like, I have to leave in the morning, be back at night. And he's literally in the middle, middle of filming Pause of Fury. And, but he just took it on. He's like, I got it. And he shifted his schedule. And his team was in Canada doing it on the East Coast. So he made sure to be like up really early. And he's like, I have to wrap at like one o'clock today. And then he can go pick up the kids. And like, he just took it on. And he knows how hard this was on me, but he's like so proud. And he's just, he's just like such a good guy. Obviously, I think you can tell. This season, a couple of fresh faces joined the group. I was gonna make a joke like. I know, well, you like never know what faces. surgery. You don't know you what don't know. faces are yeah, exactly. showing up. Like sometimes there's new noses. You don't, maybe you don't recognize somebody's yeah. lips. But oh, you can say fresh yeah, faces. fresh faces, yep. So one of the new faces that we see this season is Diana. Yes. Um, what was your first opinion when you first met Diana? Actually, okay. Um, I actually liked her at Harry's birthday party. She sat across from me and we had a lot of um, things that we talked about. So I was sort of like, okay, she, she's cool. That was my first impression. I like Diana very much. I think that she is no nonsense. She has a great story to tell, yep. her personal history. I like the way she fit into the group. I thought she was very cool. Totally agree with that. I really feel like she's very much herself. Yes, she never changed. Nope, and she wasn't trying too hard. She wasn't nope. trying to fit in. She wasn't trying to be controversial. She wasn't trying to be quiet. She was just, she was herself and it felt very natural and it's effortless to be with her. I thought she was a little cold, honestly, when she came in to, was it Harry Hamlin's birthday? Uh -huh. It's the first time I met her. I honestly think that you need to find a different subject. I really do think I'm it's classless. Um, but then she sort of warmed up. I am mortified. This is back to front. What? <laughs> and then uh, we're back. I haven't heard y'all say one thing to her about calling me a Why do we need to? Well, you are one. <laughs> 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 Diana, that's not okay. I don't care who likes her or not. I, she's herself. 100%. Well, I had heard about Diana for many years. I knew that she was friends with P. 
people that I knew, and Paris and Nikki went to her parties all the time, so I knew of her. When I first met her, I thought, okay, well, this girl is going to be, you know, fabulous, over the top. That is a lot of Cartier. Oh, that one I like. Thank you so much. <laughs> I got the sense right away that regardless of how strong or outspoken, she's definitely a girl's girl. And I like that about her. She doesn't just have an amazing story and isn't just a powerhouse of a woman. She's also got such an incredible heart. She's a big heart. Very big heart. She's an amazing mom. She's got such great kids. Very smart. She's tough as nails. Yep. But she's also soft. Non-judgmental. Non-judgmental. Just kind, smart. Um, she's, she's she's a lot of fun to be with. And a big humanitarian. I mean, people Huge. don't even know. She's kept it very quiet, but her humanitarian work is really, it's really impressive. I remember meeting Diana for the first time. It was at her house. When I got to her house, this was the house that she recently sold in Malibu. We brought the kids, we had like a beach day. And we walk in and she has like a corner full of toys, like Santa. I'm like, you're Santa. She's like, I want to be Santa. And my kids, of course, I think at the time they were like five and seven, just like anything you want. I was like, you can get one thing. And Ash was like, no, you can have it all. Like it was so unbelievable. I just remember that moment because it was done with such a like real joy to give. It wasn't anything other than that. And she's been a great friend ever since. She's actually doing all of these things. It genuinely comes from, from her, from a great place, from her heart. Yeah. And she doesn't have to show it off. Remember, you're, she was a war refugee. You know, she's a Bosnian war refugee. It's quite a story. I think um, you have two fans here, that's for sure. Yeah, we like Diana. She has nothing to prove. Zero. Erica, this is your sixth season, and Dorit, this is your fifth. How do you mentally prepare to go into another season? <laughs> How do you have <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure you can prepare. You just kind of put your seatbelt on and get ready for the ride. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's. I had probably the worst time of my life, mm. you know, the season before this. I mean, I'm so tired yeah. and so overwhelmed and everything happens day to day. You must be blindsided by everything that comes out. And there's more coming. I was just really trying to show up and be there and present. That's all I could do and put a slap on a pretty face and get out there. I, it, you know, it was hard. It was just hard to go through it again. Let's have a little sensitivity to the victims. The only person you should be concerned about is me. But you know, that's what you do. You make a commitment and you show up. And then she had her horrible traumatic event. And he charged at me, grabbed me, put me down, put a gun to me. And I was just hunched no. over. Still showed up and I mean it was just it's it's been like for lack of a better word dark Lisa lost her mom I'm trying to figure out how to live without my mom and I don't know how to do it coming off of COVID for God sakes how could I forget that you can't really prepare except show up and just take it as it comes it really because it's life throws you curveballs I mean you know the nice thing is as well you know, don't forget, we're living our lives and navigating it with the world watching. So it doesn't matter what happens. You know, there, there's not always these rosy, shiny, no. sunshine moments. No. And you have to live it. And when you're surrounded by the group of women, whether you are very close to them or not so close, you know, we do manage to have fun and we do manage to laugh even if you're fighting with somebody. Yeah. You know, it's a distraction from some of the things that are going on in our lives if they are not so fun. That's true too.